Good morning. I hope you're all having a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend as we take time to remember before the Lord the many blessings of our lives, his gracious care and tender mercies towards us. And I know some of you have been traveling and uh, you will be gathering around uh, tables with lots of food and enjoying this uh, wonderful long weekend. It's uh, Thanksgiving is a, uh, a wonderful time of year. It's my favorite holiday of them all seems to be less crowded in with a, a lot of commercial things and, um, and just uh, things that are kind of crass, you know. It's, uh, it, it's rather a simple holiday, isn't it? The date for Thanksgiving in Canada is uh, unique of uh, celebrations of Thanksgiving around the world, but harvest celebrations like ours are rather common. Um, all around the world. There are variations on Thanksgiving that uh, do circle the globe, and they also reach back into uh, ancient times of ancient civilizations long ago and long gone. And most of these times of Thanksgiving have uh, this one thing in common, and that is that it is considered to be a good and appropriate thing to express uh, gratitude to God or the gods in uh, the time of harvest. Now we as Christians, of course, are so glad to be able to give thanks to God, uh, our good and gracious and generous God, who not only gives things to us and the harvest, but he loves us. In fact, he loves us so much that he gave himself to us and for us and uh, for our redemption. Well, today, uh, for our Thanksgiving message, I want to draw our attention to, to uh, Psalm 100, the 100th Psalm. And uh, so please turn in your Bible to it and uh, hear the word of God. It's a psalm for giving thanks. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let's pray. God, our Father, thank you for this wonderful word, and thank you for being such a generous and kind God, bestowing blessings on us that are far beyond our deserving, and uh, because you are so good. Please uh, direct our thoughts towards you today as we consider your word together. Grant that we may have hearts and lives of thankfulness before you because we trust in you. Thank you for meeting with us right now around your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I am uh, very grateful and uh, indebted to Alistair Begg, who is a uh, pastor I listen to just about every day in his podcasted sermons. And uh, because recently he preached on the 100th Psalm, and I uh, thought that, yeah, this would be a fantastic passage to, to speak on today. And as he preached on the 100th Psalm, and uh, talking about the exuberance of, of our thankfulness and our call to thanksgiving, he used uh, these kinds of words in, in his sermon, to, descriptive of thanksgiving. Talked about thanksgiving as something that's expansive. It reaches to the world, at least that's the call, is to reach to the world. It talks about it being inclusive and universal. It's for all nations and all people. It's a thanksgiving of exuberance, there's shouting and singing and joy and, uh, and gathering in, in festive uh, praise. It is a uh, thanksgiving that is expectant, expectant because God is continually faithful for all generations, expectant because we get to gather and meet with God's people and uh, with an anticipation of eternity, really, right? of that final gathering of gratitude and praise. It's personal. It calls on us, each of us, to be thankful before God. It's not, we don't disappear 
in the um, view of the, the whole world in, in celebration and thankful praise. But we ourselves uh, are, are called to join in, each of us personally, and then focused. It's not just um, being thankful for thankfulness. It's not just uh, thankfulness that comes uh, with a focus upon the stuff we have or the health we enjoy, but rather it's a focus that is on the Lord. Well, we could spend many, many hours feasting on this wonderful Psalm 100, and, and I've spent a, a lot of time recently just uh, meditating on it, chewing over it, studying this passage of Scripture. But uh, today, I, I just want us to think of this Psalm and, and of Thanksgiving itself under uh, three broad heads. One is the the call to thanksgiving. Next will be the songs and shouts of thanksgiving. And then uh, the court, the court of thanksgiving. First, the call to thanksgiving. I, I wonder how this psalm itself that we are, we're studying today um, is, uh, it came about, but we don't even know who the author of, of this psalm is. Uh, but I imagine that uh, at some point, uh, just we use our imaginations, thinking about that uh, person who, at some point, um, started to bring uh, to to write to um, to to compose this song, and I wonder if he uh, if he composed the psalm in free form singing. Sometimes I have, maybe many of you have, in uh, worship and praise to God, you just sort of uh, voice your your praise and your prayers uh, out loud, perhaps putting it even to song, maybe turning it into verse. And it, there's this freeform expression sometimes in the giving of birth to, to music. Or uh, did he have his, his lyre on his lap and was he plucking the strings and sounding the chords. Well, uh, the, the music maybe gave, come, came first and the words were added later. Uh, we're not really sure, but maybe that's a possibility. Or did he sit down with a tablet and with a reed in hand and start to write, write and write words and the, the rhymes and the truths and the beauty and thoughts as, as they came to him, giving shape to this uh, beautiful um, poem, song, prayer. So, we, but we don't, not quite, quite sure, but at some point the song took shape and had a sound to it and a, and a song, a music associated with it. And we imagine that at, at some point the author of the psalm uh, was confident enough to take a friend or maybe a group of people together, some fellow Levites in the temple, and he, for the first time, presented this song and uh, sang it and, and prayed this out loud in the hearing of other people. And then um, after this, he would have called together the members of the choir because they were appointed people in the, in the temple for the purpose of uh, bringing music to the people of God in, at times of worship and praise. And so you can imagine that he would take his lyre or whatever instrument he would use and he would impart this song, um, first for the hearing of the choir and then they would learn the words and learn the music. And uh, as the, the choir perfected the psalm, they were now ready to bring it out in the hearing of the people. And then this psalm over time became part of the normal and regular, regulative uh, praise and worship and prayers of the people of Israel as they would gather in the temple courts. And uh, it would be embraced not only in their hearing, but they, the words would be echoed out loud in their voices and uh, then em embraced in their hearts as well. And now here we are, perhaps as much as 3,000 years later, um, we are in the language of English uh, around the other side of the world in uh, Manitoba. We ourselves uh, use this very song in expressing the thanksgiving of God's people. Uh, you know, this has been um, adopted and translated, adapted into various forms translated into many languages. And uh, this Psalm 100 
has been used for many, many years as just one of the portions of scripture that has been used at the beginning of worship services to call people into that uh, focused time of worship and praise. A very familiar hymn uh, is All People That On Earth Do Dwell. And uh, this is a hymn that is well known to a great many of us from our, our Christian life. And uh, we uh, sing it, and, and it is a rendition of um, Psalm 100. Now, we, uh, I wish I had, I forgotten my hymn book. Uh, I'm very sorry, I'll be right back. Thanks for your patience. Uh, here is a uh, rendition of this psalm that is cherished and, and loved by um, God's people. And you, you know what it's, uh, the, the, the tune is, Come ye thankful people, come. And just... Uh, Thought I had it marked. You can tell that I'm not editing these. Um, I did have it marked. Come, ye thankful people, come, raise the song of harvest home. All is safely gathered in ere the winter storm began. God our maker doth provide for our wants to be supplied. Come to God's own temple, come, raise the song of harvest home. And uh, again, uh, a more uh, uh, perfect, I guess, a more correct, or um, true rendition of this song is all people that on earth do dwell. Six sixty nine. Yeah, there it is. All people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheerful voice. Him serve with mirth, his praise forth tell. Come ye before him and rejoice. Know that the Lord is God indeed. Without our aid he did us make. We are his folk, he doth us feed, and for his sheep he doth us take. O oh, enter then his gates with praise, approach with joy his courts unto. Praise, laud, and bless his name always, for it is seemly so to do. And uh, so the, we have these renditions of this psalm that have been put into music for us to sing down through the, the years. Now, what we have here is uh, a summons to worship and praise. And listen to the imperatives that we have in this passage of scripture uh, to call us to, to worship. We have imperatives like shout, um, serve. We have come, we have know, we have enter, we have give thanks and, and praise. All of these summonses for us to come and to, to give thanks to God. But this call to thankfulness and thanksgiving isn't something that comes uh, merely from a psalmist, perhaps 3,000 years ago, but it really emerges from God himself that our God is a calling God. And it is in the inspiration of this psalm that God now, through the Holy Spirit, writing or uh, um, shaping and uh, giving creative voice through the creative ability of, of this particular musician, the Holy Spirit inspires the psalm and God through this psalm himself is calling to us. And we know from the scriptures that our God is a, um, a God who does tenderly call us. He persistently calls us. He graciously calls us. And he says, come. There are 
many portions in scripture uh, that have God calling us. But here are some, some of the familiar ones. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. They are as, uh, though they are as red as crim crimson, they shall be as wool. And he's calling us to cleansing. And then a little later in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, all you who have no money, and come buy and eat, come buy wine and milk without milk, uh, without money and without cost. Then in the New Testament, as Christ now walks among us, God in human flesh, God now speaks that this God in human flesh gives voice to the, the summoning call of, uh, of God. He says, come, <clears throat> come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And Jesus tells us parables of a great banquet feast, a celebration that's uh, being prepared by the king and the servants are sent out into the world to say come come the feast is ready come the table is prepared come to the to the celebration table and then even in the book of revelation as the the scriptures themselves come to a conclusion in the last chapter of the book of revelation we have this this issue of, of a summons where it says the spirit and the bride say come let him who hears say, come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. And so we have a God who is summoning us. He's, he's calling us into this thank praise and, and this relationship with him. And, and I wonder if there's anyone here who is uh, listening and considering this passage of scripture and realizing that here is a, a psalm that is summoning us to thankfulness and praise, um, to realize that here is also God summoning us to a relationship with him. He is calling right now, he's calling to Christians, he's calling to all of us to set aside or maybe our bitterness or thank, thanklessness or our preoccupations with self and to uh, come together in in praise of of our God, and He's calling right now. But He's also calling. Perhaps there's some listening to me right now who have not yet fully surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ. That they uh, haven't yet. They they understand the gospel. Maybe you you've heard the gospel and you've heard people pray for you and you've heard gospel messages before and invitations. And this may be a wonderful day. This is a wonderful day for you to realize that even now God is calling you himself. He says, come, come, come to me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come, our God is a calling God. And then we have songs of thanksgiving. It's not just now the, the psalm itself, which is a, a prayer in the form of a of a song, but it's it's a call to all of God's people, indeed all of creation, to join together in songs of thanksgiving. See, thanksgiving is intended to be something that we do out loud. It, it's intended for others to hear. And in fact, it's even at times described as something that's quite uh, loud and noisy. So in the Psalms, we have the clashing of cymbals, the blowing of pipes, the blowing of the horn, and the shouts of God's glad people. In the, uh, the times of Israel, the, fests, the feasts and festivals would often be marked at the very beginning with the sound of a trumpet, a shofar, a, um, a ram's horn, and it would be sounded loud, uh, loud far and wide. And then as we discover more about the way the temple was done, the, the worship was done in the temple from the scriptures, we discover that there's the singing of choirs who are using cymbals and lutes and lyres and reed instruments. And here we have in uh, Psalm 100, we have, it's a uh, give shouts for joy, shout for joy. It says, give joyful songs, give thanks, praise his name. And all of these things are intended to be done out loud. 
And uh, as I think of uh, Thanksgiving celebrations and growing up as a child, going to church and going to Thanksgiving services, as I uh, read earlier, there's, there's old, old hymns that we would sing together. Come, you thankful people, come, raise the song of harvest home. Also, sing to the Lord of harvest, sing songs of love and praise. Or, we plow the fields and scatter the good seed on the land but it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. In the wonderful chorus, all good gifts around us are sent from heaven above and thank the Lord. Oh, thank the Lord for all his love. And um, in my memory, I just have blended together all of these wonderful Thanksgiving celebrations that I participated in at church as uh, God's people would sing these old familiar hymns together. And, and sometimes these songs that we sing together, the songs of thanksgiving are things that can evoke in us, and, and they do in me, a, a, a nostalgic sense. I, and in that nostalgic sense, it, it's kind of comforting to uh, remember and to sing these familiar old hymns. It's comforting to, because I'm tying myself together in the singing of the songs with, with um, my parents and my family and my friends and saints who have gone before. As we think of uh, Psalm 100, it ties us together with God's people down through the, the long centuries. But I also find in, this, in the call to singing Thanksgiving, uh, something that's really, really quite wonderful. To know that my life and, and the actions of my life, the expressions of my voice, um, are, are intended to bring glory to God in, as we offer him thankful praise, and that it is quite possible for our intentions, our minds, our hearts, our bodies to join together in praise and adoration of God. See, thanksgiving is something that we do. It's not merely something that we feel. It's called thanksgiving. We give thanks. It's something that we say. It's not just something that we think. And so here is we've come to realize, especially those of us who have responded to the call of God and have put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that um, he is knitting together in us both our spirits and our souls, our hearts and our bodies to be creatures of thankfulness and praise. And how is this possible? Isn't this a miracle to realize that in the Lord Jesus Christ and together on occasions like this one, that we can actually be brought together in, in a, an expression of our integrity and our wholeness into a position of being grateful to God. It is truly a miracle because God's grace has awakened in us a love for him and enables us to, uh, in the view of and because of God's grace in our lives, to give our lives in grateful praise. The psalmist says, give thanks. He cries out, give thanks. The trumpet sounds to give thanks. The choir and the priests gather together, and they do. They give thanks. And in verse 1, it's, it's so remarkable here, where he shouts, he says, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth, all the earth. And this to me is a, such a wonderful thing to ponder and to think about, that as we are called together in songs of praise, this call is extended to the whole world. Indeed, it would go to the entire universe, where we know that ultimately a day is coming when all that is created by God will join together in united praise and thankful praise, uh, and worship before our God. And uh, so what we do today um, in our homes and in our churches here in Moosehorn is that we are part of the gathering people of God and to respond to the invitation and the call of God and joining our hearts and our lives together in the praises of God. Now, it's possible that some of you listening to this are just right now overburdened with a lot of discouragement, perhaps fear pain, bitterness, and hurt. And yet you realize that God is calling you to give him thanks. This is a remarkable, God-given, gracious possibility for you. 
as you surrender to him and you cast all your burdens and cares upon him because he cares for you. And you will discover that in coming to God and daring to open your mouths in thankfulness and praise and directing your lives in his uh, worship, that uh, you have many of your burdens lifted from your, your lives. And uh, I'll admit it, that not all of your struggles, not all of your hurts, not all of your worries and pains will disappear just merely by singing some psalms or, or praying some prayers, not immediately, not necessarily. But all of this is in anticipation of that day when all of our burdens shall be lifted, all of our tears shall be dried, and we shall all be joined together with all creatures in heaven and on earth, giving worship and praise to God. And finally, that brings us to the court of thanksgiving the court of thanksgiving, where we see that uh, there's a place to be where we gather. There's a congregation that makes up a group of the gathered people. And it, it's a good reminder to all of us, I think, as Christians, that when it comes down to Christian worship, when it comes down to the kind of worship and praise that God requires and um, wants of us, it's not something we can do in isolation. We cannot worship him fully by going off and playing golf. You know, people say, I can worship God in the golf course. I don't need to go to church. But there is something about the coming together of God's people and congregation in that, in a holy place. And we also see that not only is there the, the physical place and the time and the group that is part of this court of thanksgiving, but thanksgiving is focused on God himself, the God who is our Savior and Lord at the heart of it all. The Bible scripture says here in Psalm 100, shout to the Lord, Yahweh, shout to the Lord, serve the Lord, come before him, know that the Lord is God, and we are his. There's a, a relationship in all of this. We are his, and these are his courts. See, he is the, the God who loves us forever, and he is true and faithful to us through all ages. You see, it's uh, wrong and insufficient to have as our object of thanksgiving the stuff we have in life, the health we're enjoying, the people around us, even as wonderful as our families and friends and circumstances might be. It isn't thanksgiving yet until we have come before the Lord and we have given our thanks to him. And we as Christians of all people know this, don't we? He calls us. He saved us. He makes us his own. And he loves us. And so thus, this call, Psalm 100, is a call for us to come as gathered, thankful, people of God. It's an invitation that comes from heaven itself. It comes to all the earth and it comes to you and to me. The reference here in Psalm 100 is that of our being sheep to a great shepherd. And I can't help but think of uh, John chapter 10, where Jesus speaks of himself as the good shepherd. And he says this, the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. When he had brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them because his sheep follow him. They know his voice. A stranger they won't follow. In fact, they will run away. Down to verse 14. I am the good shepherd, Jesus said. I know my sheep, my sheep know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And here's that wonderful anticipation of, of more and more people being gathered. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. There shall be one flock and one shepherd. And so today on this day of thanksgiving, let us all hear and respond to the invitation of God. Come, come and give thanks. Come to our great and generously kind God and Savior. The voice is going out to the world, and yes, 
the voice is going out here in Moosehorn, and we are being summoned to him. Again, the book of Revelation, the concluding verses, all in anticipation of the glad day when Jesus was going to return to this earth and establish the perfections and beauties of justice of his kingdom forever. That invitation goes out. The spirit and the bride say, come. Let him who hears say, come. Whoever is thirsty, let us, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the waters of life. Come to the Lord Jesus. Come and give thanks. Let's pray. God, our Father, you are such a good and gracious God. Thank you for your word that comes to us from ages past, from the hands and from the voice of uh, one that you used to inspire and write this psalm. We now hear your call to thanksgiving, and we come to you. Bless us, Lord, as we follow you with gladness of heart. And keep us until that day when we will see Jesus face to face. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you. I look forward to being with you next week. Lord bless and have a wonderful Thanksgiving celebration.